okay so today's subject is nephrotic syndrome and this video I'm actually I usually start with the definition of the thing I want to talk about this video I'm going to start with the pathogenesis of the nephrotic syndrome to start to, to understand the definition so I found it useful to start with this video filtration is the first of three main processes in urine formation Blood flowing from the glomerulus exerts pressure, and this glomerular blood pressure is high enough to push water and dissolved substances out of the glomerulus and into the Bowman's capsule. This fluid then becomes known as the glomerular filtrate. The wall of the glomerulus contains pores and is similar to a strainer. The diameter of the pores determines which substances flow through and which remain. The only blood constituents that do not move into Bowman's capsule are the larger molecules such as blood cells and most plasma proteins, which exit the efferent arterial. To summarize filtration, glomerular blood pressure causes filtration through the glomerular capsular membrane to create the glomerular filtrate. Okay, so the idea of filtration is to get rid of the waste products, okay? Of the blood and this happens through a mechanism of filtration through what we call a glomerulus we have a glomerulus a group of capillaries and a front arterial a front arterial okay here we have a Bowman capsule that surround the glomerulus okay the blood that comes from the front arterial must be infiltrated through the uh, the Bowman capsule to be uh, to go to urine and get rid of the waste products that are in but you have uh, the important thing here is the blood should uh, get rid of the waste product only okay it should not get rid of proteins plasma proteins that are normally in blood like albumin the most important okay it should not get rid of the RPCs okay and the mechanism of that are, uh, is restricted by multiple layers in the glomerular wall or in the capillary wall that prevent the filtration of the proteins and RPCs and YPCs and other important things that should not be infil filtrated into urine okay what really happens in nephrotic syndrome okay that we have a problem with this protective mechanism okay we have a protein that go uh, to urine instead of uh, being in blood okay again we have in glomerulus okay in the capillaries wall we have three layers the endothelium the basement membrane the epithelium or the bodocyte okay this is the endothelium okay the basement membrane the glomerular basement membrane and the bodocytes these are the bodocytes we have also what we call a food processes of the bodocytes okay these th three layers work to uh, not filtrate the proteins uh, through the uh, glomerular wall starting from the endothelial cell okay then the glomerular basement membrane then the podocytes or the epithelium of the uh, uh, capillary wall okay and the slit diaphragms here they all work to prevent the leakage of albumin albumin and other proteins out of the glomerulus to the urine okay in nephrotic syndrome we have some kind of destruction to these mechanisms we may have a problem with the endothelium of the basement of the uh, glomerular wall we may have a problem with basement membrane we may have and most commonly we have a problem with the pudo pudo sites okay and the slit diaphragms so here we have a leakage of protein and this is what we call a nephrotic syndrome okay nephrotic syndrome 
So we have a change in permeability of the endothelial of the basement membrane of the epithelium to the proteins. Okay, and that will lead to leakage of protein into urine, uh, forming what we call proteinuria. Okay, and when proteins are in the urine, so we have less proteins in the blood because the protein moved from the blood to urine. So we have hypoalbuminemia because albumin is the most important protein in the blood. Okay, hypoalbuminemia and the liver which is the factor factory of the albumin will try to compensate the hypoalbuminemia by making uh, making uh, 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 proteins okay and this will lead to increase in lipid production okay this will lead to hyperlipidemia okay uh, okay and as a result of the hypoalbuminemia we will have edema edema why because this is a blood vessel for example okay we have albumin that is out from this blood vessel less a protein in this uh, blood okay hypoalbuminemia so a lot of fluid will be there with less proteins so the oncotic pressure will push the fluid into the third space forming an uh, edema okay it's very important the edema and there are many mechanisms that uh, explain uh, the happening of edema and nephrotic syndrome this is one of them is the most important okay so this is nephrotic syndrome now let's get back to the definition of nephrotic syndrome is a condition that is characterized by okay heavy proteinuria the most important thing as i said okay heavy proteinuria what do we mean by heavy proteinuria it means more than two a gram okay in 24 hours a protein in urine more than two grams okay or more than 40 milligram 40 milligram in one hour okay if, uh, either you can say uh, more than two grams in 24 hours or more than 40 milligram in one hour this is a protein urea okay or sometimes they use what we call protein creatinine ratio protein creatinine ratio if it is more than two then we have protein urea normally we may have some uh, some proteins in urine but they should be less than four milligram an hour okay if they are more than 40 milligram an hour it is a protein urea it is a nephrotic syndrome okay between 4 and 40 it is not normal it is elevated but not a nephrotic syndrome okay so you you say it is a protein urea but not a nephrotic syndrome Okay, again, so we have heavy proteinuria in 24 hours, more than 2 gram. In 1 hour, 40 milligrams is the proteinuria. So the proteins are all now in the urine. What happens to uh, protein in the blood? We have hypoalbuminemia. Less than 3 gram per deciliter of blood serum albumin. Okay, this is the, this is the second thing to have. First is proteinuria, then hypoalbuminemia and the third thing to have is edema as i said okay edema or ascites very important there is no nephrotic syndrome without edema you can confirm this by two lab tests okay so this is the first three components of definition of nephrotic syndrome heavy proteinuria hypoalbuminemia and edema also hyper lipidemia and i told you this is because of the compensatory mechanisms of the liver to uh, make albumin it will also produce lipids and this will lead to hyperlipidemia it may be uh, cholesterol triglyceride and other things when you have cholesterol more than 250 milligram per deciliter this is uh, hyperlipidemia in 25% in 25 of cases of nephrotic syndrome, we may have hematuria 
and hypertension this is atypical hematuria usually is for nephritic syndrome not nephrotic syndrome but in 25 percent of nephrotic syndrome we may have hematuria and hypertension it is if it is exceeds if it exceeds one week then it is a atypical presentation and you should take a renal biopsy for a syndrome by the way what other things can uh, we can call atypical presentation of nephrotic syndrome if we have a low complement c3 and c4 okay it is a atypical presentation of nephrotic syndrome hepatitis b and c extreme of age okay extremes of age is also atypical nephrotic syndrome okay the types of nephrotic syndrome or the classification maybe you may classify the nephrotic syndrome to transient okay or persistent nephrotic syndrome you may uh, it may be glomular due to destruction to glomul uh, to glomerous okay or tubular due to problem in secretion absorption and so on in the tubules may be symptomatic okay or asymptomatic may be orthostatic proteinuria it just comes uh, when the patient is in, in standing position when he is not standing the, there is no problem yeah the, this happens okay and fixed nephrotic syndrome okay so you can have transient persistence symptomatic asymptomatic glomerular tubular orthostatic or fixed the incidence of nephrotic syndrome actually is more in males and in indians so it affects by the race by the gender okay and by genetics it may be genetic syndrome it may, it was noticed that nephrotic syndrome is associated with hla dr7 or drb8 or 12 okay so it may be genet genetic syndrome so again i told you that the basement membrane the slit diaphragms okay I'll show you that this is the slit diaphragms between the podocytes okay the basement membrane and the podocytes are the three protective layers for the glomerulus not to uh, leak uh, proteins okay if you have a gene mutation for example in podocyte okay or if you have a problem in the slit diaphragm maybe genetic mostly it is genetic or if you have a problem in basement membrane charge for example okay it should be positive uh, uh, to uh, avoid the protein coming if it's negative then any problem with that may lead to nephrotic syndrome now let's move to the etiology of nephrotic syndrome we have two large subgroups of nephrotic syndrome it may be primary most of the times or secondary nephrotic syndrome primary nephrotic syndrome means that we have a destruction in the glomerulus okay in the kidney without underlying a clear cause secondary we may have an underlying cause that co that causes the nephrotic syndrome or destruction to kidney that allows the proteins to leak from the uh, uh, glomerulus okay in like cases of dm sle henoxin line purpura hepatitis and other infections and other things autoimmune diseases may predispose to nephrotic syndrome but these are very important to remember. in primary nephrotic syndrome we have many types okay i'm not going to get into details of each type i'm just going to mention them uh, we have what we call minimal change nephrotic syndrome minimal change nephrotic syndrome is the most common underlying etiology of nephrotic syndrome in minimal change nephrotic syndrome is type of a destruction to the glomerulus we have 80 percent of uh, uh, it, it constitutes about 80 percent of under seven years children okay and about 50 percent of 7 to 15 uh, year children a lot of patients with uh, minimal change nephrotic syndrome will get into renal failure okay so the first type is 
minimal change lymphatic syndrome what is minimal change lymphatic syndrome is a type of destruction to the glomerulus the second thing is focal segmental glomerulosiclerosis we have a focus of destruction okay in some segments not all segments so we call it focal segmental glomerulosiclerosis okay it may be uh, as a, a progression from minimal change nephrotic syndrome okay or may start by itself separated from any other pathology okay it leads in 30 percent of cases to renal failure so minimal change nephrotic syndrome focal segmental the third type is membranous proliferative nephrotic syndrome and the character characterization of membranous proliferative nephrotic syndrome that we have hypocomplementemia okay the complement system will have some reductions of products like in c3 c4 and so on and actually the membranous proliferative nephrotic syndrome is higher in males than in female okay we have also what we call membranous nephropathy membranous nephropathy it is a different type uh, from the membranous proliferative nephrotic syndrome and membranous nephropathy it represents less than five percent so it is the least of them okay so <coughs> it, it more to happen in adults than in children uh, it may happen more with is some systemic infections like hepatitis B, syphilis, malaria, and toxoplasmosis. This is the membranous nephropathy, not membranous proliferative, membranous nephropathy. Okay, it also may be predisposed by special medications like gold, penicillium, penicillamine. I'm sorry. Okay, they all may be predisposed to proliferative. Okay, so it is more in adolescents it more in the these infections hepatitis syphilis malaria toxoplasmosis and in some medications in some medications so again we have minimal change nephrotic syndrome we have focal segmental nephrotic syndrome or glomerular sclerosis okay we have membranous a proliferative nephrotic syndrome we have membranous nephropathy membranous nephro also we have a genetic a predisposed nephrotic syndrome we have a genetic predisposed and mostly this is a problem we lead to a problem in podocyte okay in podocyte the genetic nephrotic syndrome should be the ch child should be uh, younger than three months okay most commonly we have what we call finish type nephrotic syndrome in genetic we have finished type nephrotic syndrome we have a problem with nephrin nephrin or podocene nephrin or podocene nephrin is the most important here we have loss in all proteins not only albumin okay it is inherited as autosomal recessive disease okay nephrin and podocene in genetic nephrotic syndrome most of the times you can't use a steroid okay you have to use other immunosuppressant okay it is associated with 50 percent or more than 50 percent chronic renal failure so it is very bad to have genetic nephrotic syndrome okay so uh, this is the importance of genetic remember nephrine podocene okay the problem of podocyte mostly uh, it is autosomal recessive uh, we have loss of proteins not only the albumin but also other proteins okay so this is the uh, first th lecture about nephrotic syndrome thank you very much for watching see you in the next video talking about the clinical manifestations of nephrotic syndrome the diagnosis of nephrotic syndrome the management and complications and prevention. Thank you very much. See you.